This program and its contents are designed for information and educational purposes only. This program does not render medical advice or professional services and is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. The information provided here should not be used for the purposes of diagnosing or treating a medical or psychiatric condition. If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, consult your health care provider. Hi, welcome to Positive Momentum, where we focus on the successes, find passionate, positive, and playful. And today I have Carol Stoltenberg with me. And Carol, would you mind doing an introduction and tell everybody what it is you do? <laughs> well, I do a little bit of everything, I guess. <laughs> um, I was a high school German teacher Ooh. for many years, really loved that. Um, and then when I retired, I finally got busy. It uh, <laughs> is amazing how many different things enter your life when people find out that you're not employed mm. during the day. Yes. <laughs> so I've gotten involved with uh, Omaha Sister City Association. Okay. I was already in the German American Society. I've become more active in my church. And I have traveled, and that is one of my passions, is okay. travel. Cool. So. Well, you have told me some interesting stories about your travels, and I would like to kind of focus on some of that, if you don't mind. Yeah, right. I know you brought some pictures. So um, where would you like to start with the pictures? Let's kind of just... Well, first of all, I like the kind of travel where I get to meet people. Right, so you're a traveler, not a tourist. Yes. Okay. And in fact, the organization that I travel with or have the last couple times, uh, that is part of their name is travel rather than tours. Okay. And we get into homes. We um, don't actually spend the night in homes, but we do have meals there and okay. eat the food that they eat. In fact, we help prepare it. Oh and um, we get into schools and different things like that and we really get a feel for a country and its people and wow. i like that and i guess i started seeing the difference between touring and traveling um, early in my career i had a chance to live in germany and teach there okay and so i got to know the germans okay. on a one to one basis and kind of became one of them oh. and now when i go to different countries i like to get a little bit of the feel that same thing so how did they find families willing to do this i mean that that just sounds kind of you know Somebody would come up to me and go, hey, we, we got some people traveling, how would, well, you know. I, um, I don't think they have a problem. And oh. I, my most recent big trip was to Southeast Asia. Ooh. It was very special. I was gone for six weeks, visited oh. four countries. Wow. And uh, for example, one of the families that we visited there, they went through their training with this organization. Okay. But it is customary for them to eat, sleep, live pretty much without much furniture. Okay. So they have these beautifully polished wooden floors. Okay. Which I wouldn't have at my house, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And they sit cross-legged or squatted down on, on the floor and eat. Well, they didn't want to do that to senior citizen Americans okay. because our knees and stuff don't work quite like <laughs> theirs do. We, we haven't lived that way. Right. And so they had to provide this one family with a dining room table and chairs because they didn't have any. So oh. they provided them with the furniture and taught them how to do stuff. And then we were invited into the home and got to help make some of the food. And it was all very delicious. But I have uh, had some adventures down there as far as other kinds of food go. Like? <laughs> well, um, the, the first really adventurous thing that I had was the silkworm. And I okay. decided when I saw them the first time, I kind of, when else am I going to be able to eat a silkworm? A so I decided to try it. And I mixed it with salad. Okay. And ate it on kind of a little chip of some kind right. as a sample, and it was good. I decided they actually taste pretty much like peanuts, like cooked peanuts, okay. and that I 
ate them just plain once I had a chance to do that. I that was one of, <laughs> that was one of the, the more positive experiences. Okay. Um, I also have tried tarantula. Okay. The legs were just crunch. I didn't care a whole lot for the body. Oh, I'm but, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> but I did try that. And just one bite of rat. Well, you got to try. You know, you only you, live I'm, once. I'm, I only live once. And I, that's one of my things, is that I think people have to take advantage of the opportunities that present themselves. You have to take some risks, mm -hmm. and you have to do some things that you're not really comfortable with. Well, how else are you going to go outside your comfort zone yeah. and grow as an individual? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I did do those things, and it was really fun. But um, there were a lot of other things, just um, getting to know the people. When I travel, I take balloons with me. Yeah. So I don't like to give out tips everywhere I go so that I can take pictures of people. But I find that I can make friends with the kids and get them to follow me all over and show me their homes and stuff like that if I do give them a balloon. Oh, wow, like the Pied Piper kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, kind <laughs> of. And like in Central America once, I was handing out the balloons, and then this one little boy, his mom, saw that I was an okay person and invited me not actually into the house, but into the walled-in courtyard that they okay. had there. And we got to see them doing the work that they were doing and everything. So, so you are definitely a world citizen. I'd like to think a little bit anyway, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I really enjoy the travel. Well, from what I've seen of your pictures, you, you really get in there. You, you in, involve yourself with the families. You know, like you said, you're kind of the Pied Piper where the kids are concerned. So, you know, and how else do you reach people but to actually go out there and get involved with them. You know, we could sit there and observe all day long, but we don't get it. Well, and another, another story, in Central America, one of the things, like here in this country, we get tattoos and stuff like okay. that. Well, down there in this one area, the big thing is to get a gold tattoo implant thing in your teeth. Okay. And so this one lady had a gold star in one of her front teeth. And I really wanted to get a picture of it, but I really didn't want to just say, hey, that's kind of weird having a gold, <laughs> you're a poor person and you have this gold star in your tooth. So I bargained with them a little bit and I kind of wanted one of their beautiful hand-woven outfits anyway. Mm -hmm. And got her laughing and posing with this outfit I was going to buy that I finally did get a picture of her laughing and I could zoom in and enlarge and I had the picture that I wanted. Oh, look at you. So, <laughs> so it was fun. Oh, I'm sure. And oh then I kind of try to pass that along. As a school teacher, I have one friend tells me that once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher kind of in your whole okay. life forever and ever. Okay, that's possible. And at first I kind of resented that because I didn't want to be that person that had to be in charge all the time okay. and assert my lesson plans on everybody else and everything. But one of the things that I really enjoy doing right now is continuing to take high school kids on trips to Germany. Oh. And um, I try to get them, there the foods aren't as weird as silkworms and rats. I, mean, I spent three years in Germany, I do understand that. It, it, it's, it's a good. lot better. We've got bratwurst and rouladen and, and all kinds of other good things. The, the white asparagus in, that's grown near our s German sister city, Braunschweig, okay. is absolutely to die for. Really? Mm. But I try to get, so I take high school kids, and there are several of us who do this. I, and no, by no means do it alone, but, um, and get them, they live with host families okay. over there, as I do, and experience everything that those host families do. So how long do you go with the, the high school kids? Three how weeks, okay. three weeks. So it's enough time that they can get a little homesick right. and miss family and pets and boyfriends and girlfriends and things like that, but they also love it. 
Oh yeah, I, I did. A, a th like I said, I did three years in Germany, and you know, stepped off the plane and gained twenty pounds. Yeah, you know, but the yeah. food, the, the 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 history, the the people, the it just. I, I really wish I would have paid more attention when I was in school to, to the history and things because I learned the language better. All of that stuff comes alive when you're over there. Yes. I wasn't really into history in high school or college mm -hmm. either, but you get over there and you see where these battles were fought yes. and things like that and it all makes, makes sense. Ruins of castles. Yeah. You know, the castles are one thing, but the ruins are almost more attractive because you can actually go in there and, and feel and kind of see the alcoves and see, oh, this is where, all, oh my goodness. And I kind of like to imagine myself in one of the long yes. gowns that they would. And it's all very romantic and cool when you're imagining that. But then imagine living there all year round and it gets cold and you've got a fire in the fireplace, but those rocks are doggone cold. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a nice comfortable bed to sleep on or a microwave to nuke your food. No, and you got those little arrow slots, you yeah. know, so there's always a draft coming yes. through and breezy and yeah. No, then you get a little bit of a Vincent Price kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's but, right. Yeah, I loved, I loved we, we were in Stuttgart for oh, three okay. years, so yeah. Oh, you did experience a lot of stuff. Yes, then. went to Neuschweinstein and, oh, and yeah. Liechtenstein, and you know, traveled a little bit. You know, did three countries in twenty five and twenty four hours. So you know, did. Oh kind my of gosh! Had a, had a great Ger Oh my God! We had a great German national who lived on, below us when we first moved in, and the deal was I would teach him English, he would teach me German. Well. He could speak American, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can speak enough German to get me a beer. That's important. <laughs> that's important. Well, when you talk about the national that you knew, that's the way it was with me too. Um, I was lucky enough to live in Germany for eight years. Oh wow! Yes, yeah. I had been a teacher here in Plattsmouth. Okay. And uh, had an, a German exchange student in one of my classes for that for the year that she was here and her name is Heidrun I still give her credit for being really a, a person who made a, here so here's a student making a really big difference in a teacher's life cool she arranged it that I could come and teach English at her German high school Wow. And so one day she showed up and said, well, how serious were you about wanting to live abroad for a while? And if you were serious, I have a job for you and you can live in the little apartment in my family's home. And wow. that's what I did. And I fell in love with it and ended up staying for these eight years and teaching at her school. She and her brother have both since become teachers themselves. So it's the teacher and the student influencing each other. Back I love and forth. it. Oh my gosh, yes. that is fabulous. Yes. And that really was something that changed my life because then when I did come back, um, my parents were getting older. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister had both married and started families, and I was missing out on all of that. Oh, and so okay. I tearfully got on the plane and came back home again. Mm -hmm. But that's why I became a German teacher here. Okay. was because I could add that new subject that I loved and was passionate about. So did you speak German before? Oh, oh so it was totally immersion. Uh, yeah. But that's, that's what I hear. The best way to learn it a is. language is it to is. just immerse yourself it in is, it. It is frustrating, but it is the very best way to do it. And I have seen now when I take these exchange groups over for three weeks, Mm -hmm. It is amazing. The ones who have a little bit of background from their schools, okay. if they are willing to take that risk to practice what they've learned, mm -hmm. their knowledge, their fluency just grows by leaps and bounds. Oh, I can imagine. And that in turn gives them confidence to keep using it and mm -hmm. it just snowballs for them. Wow. So of, of all the things, and, and I know that's really gonna be hard to pick out one thing, what was the best experience you had when you lived over there? I mean, if you could, or maybe the most challenging or something that really stands out for you. It would have to be just bonding with my family that I lived with. And they were so supportive. They taught me the language. 
they would drill me at times and they would let me express myself when it was a slow, painful process okay. until it became more fluent. Um, so it would definitely be getting to know them. And then okay. from that, again, my whole life changed from being an English teacher in the United, in the small town United States mm -hmm. to being a German teacher with connections through sister cities and all of this. And then just my, my passion for, for travel. So how did you get involved? What, can you explain more about the sister cities and how you get involved, how, what, that, what that means and how, how did you get involved? I in would welcome that? the opportunity because anyone who's seeing this interview and would like to join Omaha Sister Cities, we do have a website. <laughs> uh, and what would that be? Uh, do you know what that I don't know it off the okay. top of my head, you but Google, 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 Google Omaha Sister City Association okay. and there we are. Okay, cool. So and, uh, but we, Omaha has six sister cities. Okay. We started, in fact, 49 years ago with Shizuoka, Japan. Okay. And uh, we're going to have a big celebration for the 50th anniversary next year. So people who do get involved now, it's a great time to get involved because there are gonna be lots of special activities going on in addition to the, the regular membership activities. So we have Shizuoka, Japan, then came Braunschweig, Germany. Uh, we have Jalapa, Mexico. We have Nace, Germany. We have um, Lith Shaole, Lithuania, and Yantai, China. Okay. And um, we have various opportunities to communicate and occasionally go to those cities to travel okay. there. And then here in Omaha, the communities for those different countries, uh, we do have a Lithuanian community in Omaha, Mexican communities right. and so on, and they host different activities too. Oh. Recently, we did a tour of uh, South Omaha oh. and got into some of the stores and really visited with some of the people. And so we get to know our own community as well as these six cities abroad, and that's yeah. a really big thing. Oh, it, it is because how many of us even know about different exactly the, you know, we don't different know cultures our within our own culture? Yeah, yeah. You know? oh, and wow. so so there are six different communities in Omaha that are inviting us to do things. Right, so the 50th anniversary thing, is that something people are gonna get to go to Japan for, or is that something that we're there gonna do will here? Be a, there will be a trip to Japan, okay. um, and lots of other activities. We'll have a big gala celebration here in cool. Omaha, and feature all six sister cities. Oh, okay. So um, it's, it's gonna be a really big thing, and I would encourage people to get involved. It sounds wonderful, and especially if you, you know, it, it, it's going to encourage diversity as well. Yes. I love that part. Yes. I love that. So you're originally from the area? I am. I grew up on a farm in just north of Omaha, went okay. to school most of the time uh, in Omaha. I started, however, this is dating myself. I started uh, in a one-room country school. Oh, I love those. Oh, it was great. It was a wonderful oh. experience, and it was just for the first four years. Mm -hmm. But from that, I learned cooperation because the older kids would help the younger ones, and the younger ones would occasionally be able to do something, pronounce spelling words or something for the next older class, and we all played together no matter what the difference in our ages and things like that. Yeah, that's something we've lost with we the segregation have. of you know the, the grades. We really have. Yeah. Um, so anyway, grew up on a farm, uh, loved to horseback ride and oh. do all of those different things, and oh. then um, went through OPS. Then once our little school district had to close, oh, okay. and studied, uh, got my BA out in. Um, Midland College. It was okay. just Midland University now, the college in Fremont. Okay. And it was with a professor out there that I did my first European tour where, you know, every couple of days you go to a different country sort of thing. Oh. But it was a good initiation. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. And in fact, the following year did the same route, recruiting people to go with me. And the oh. second time around, I got 
got a little bit more in depth of, of the different places that we'd been at. Well, uh, and yeah. by then I had the travel bug and, and that was <laughs> it. Wow, that's great. I, I just, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, it just, I, I, I'm just astonished. I mean, I, I love your stories and, and well, what, what everything's and, involved and in. Well, and the idea that this little girl who went to a one-room country school has now traveled a lot um, has, has really made a difference. And that's why I kind of come back to the fact that I, all through my life, I've been really lucky to have role models and mentors and people who encouraged me to do things. Right. And nothing was ever impossible if I wanted to try it. And That's great. I try to tell other people that too. And to let, especially the kids these days, know that uh, there's more than sitting someplace and texting, yeah. get, get offline, and, and go live your, your life directly. You, you experience so much more. Vir experience virtually is just, you're just yeah. so closed in and so closed off and, and you don't know how to, we don't know how to communicate. And one of the things I we thought don't. about doing with this show is, is opening people up, you know, doing some yeah. challenges. Okay, you know, people say you have to, in order to be a friend or have friends, you have to be a friend. Well, maybe some of us don't know how to be friends. You know, you know just different things that we wouldn't know how to do because of the fact that we're so closed into yes. this yes. electronic in introverted life. Yes. So. And we need also to learn to listen to people. That's so hard to do. And when we're, we're texting and stuff, we're not focusing in. And so many people, when they do carry on a live conversation, they are thinking of what they're going to say next instead of really listening to what that person's saying. Right. So you're right. You are correct. I mean, I, and I know I'm guilty of that myself. You know, oh, we like, all do it, know, some. Some of us more than others. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things behind this. Is, okay, yes, yeah, so I'm going to work on my listening skills. Yeah. Because, you know, there's add that active listening. Yes. Instead of just the passive going, yes. yeah, yeah, I know what you're going to say. And you're kind of yeah. miss something important and you're missing you out on that relationship. That's right. And you, That's right. And this all kind of pulls everything together because, I mean, you've built relationships with people around the world. You've, you've experienced them and they've experienced you. So you've been an ambassador for us and they've been ambassador for their country. And it's just, and just citizens, period. I yeah. Mean, yeah. You, I, you're amazing. I, I, <laughs> I really, you know, I, 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 well, I can't commit. Well, the, the, peop the people who inspired me to do these things are the, the really amazing ones. And I guess I try to pay it forward and pass that on to the students and maybe even to the, the little kids in Southeast Asia that I give balloons to or whatever to show that not all Americans drive great big cars really fast down the road and have to have ice cubes in their water. Yeah, exactly, because you know we all have, okay, stereotypes in our minds or whatever, we have a visual of what we believe something is like. And then mm -hmm. when we actually meet them, we're going, wait a minute, they're not a, a, at all what, that, yeah. I'm, my whole, I'm, I'm, I was delusioned, you know, I, my bubble is burst yes. because I don't, I, now I don't know how to respond because I had this big image and I knew, and oh, now what, you know, and so it, it's, and we also need to be able to laugh at ourselves. And a lot of us don't know how to do that because we've taken ourselves so seriously. And my, my, one of my travel examples of that one was when I was in Central America. I do not speak Spanish. I can okay. do a few basic greetings and things like that. And I had left my deodorant in the hotel we had stayed at the previous night, but I discovered it right away. And it was a warm climate. I thought, mm -hmm. I better take care of this. And we were in this market. I do not know the word, did not know the word for deodorant in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so I walked around in this huge market area doing like this <laughs> and having people laugh. And I was laughing too. And I got my deodorant. I finally found my way to a stall that sold some. That's so nice. you've got to be able to laugh a little too. You ha well, we have to. I, I like to say, you know, we have to laugh at ourselves. Don't take ourselves so seriously because we don't get out of this life alive. No, we don't. <laughs> you know? We don't. And, and 
Life is just more fun if we can laugh. It you is. Know? I love it that. Is. I love that story. And I know we're kind of running out of time. So, is there anything, if you could go back and tell yourself, as maybe a younger you that was having some challenges, and you could give yourself some pointers, or if you can give somebody else some pointers on how to become the best person they could be, or maybe overcome a challenge, or is there any kind of advice? The main thing I would say is take risks. Okay. Take risks, uh, and again, when I was younger, I was happy riding my horse and playing around out on the farm, and I think I needed to take a few more risks at that point. And take responsibility for yourself. Don't imagine that somebody else is always going to take care of you. Be responsible for yourself. That's great advice. It's, it's hard to take sometimes because mm -hmm. it's sometimes easier to sit back and go, I'll let somebody else deal with it, you know, but be accountable for ourselves yeah. as well, you know. We may, we're, um, hey, I'm the one that screwed up, you know, not you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah. thank you, Carol, for coming on. I do appreciate it. I'm looking forward to having you back. Um, we got a surprise for everybody in a couple weeks where you'll be back, and I, I'm looking forward to that. Good. If you have any questions or comments or have any suggestions for the show, please Contact us at inquiry at positivemomentum.net or positivemomentumtv.com. And thank you very much. Look forward to talking to you again. Thanks. This was, you did great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you really did it. <laughs>